who in here speaks code, likes to code, is interested in code? Okay, awesome, about a third of the room. Who here is afraid of code? Okay, all right, who here didn't vote? Oh, perfect, thank you very much for your honesty. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, Talkbox is a platform that makes it really simple to put face-to-face -face video into any website or application. So we're gonna show you just how simple it is. Um, given that I think most of the room is not code literate, we're not gonna dive too deep into the details of what's actually happening at the semicolon level, and we'll keep it at the concept level. So we'll talk about what it takes to build an open talk powered application, and you can see just how quickly someone can get up and started. Oh, I see what's going on. They put my screen on a different, okay, beautiful. I can fix that. Uh, give me 30 seconds. There we go. All my windows are back. Okay, so let's start by just giving everyone a quick view of an OpenTalk powered app. So we have Song in the back of the room. Song, can you wave? We have Dennis in another room getting power. Dennis, thank you for waving. Uh, and then I'm publishing there on screen. That's not my best angle, but it's the best we can do right now. Um, if you had to guess, anyone out there, how many lines of code this takes, uh, someone throw out a number. It's more than one. 10, good, okay. Keep going. Y'all have fantastic expectations. Nope, no one's gonna say 100 or 500 or 1,000. Y'all love your developers. Okay, awesome, so we, I can just show you. The whole thing is about 30 lines of code. And if you look at AppRTC, which is the demo app that most people use when they wanna see if WebRTC is working or not, you're looking at 500 lines of code. So the whole value proposition of TalkBox is that we take something really hard that takes 500 lines of code and we make it as simple as 30 lines of code. And the developers in the room can really appreciate that there's a lot of magic going on in the background and hopefully the folks who are non-developers in the room can appreciate that going from 500 lines of code to 30 lines of code generates business value and it means that we go to market much quicker than if we had to deal with raw WebRTC. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Well, an open talk application really has three pieces. You need to hop into a room, you need to become a participant in the room, and you need to decide whether you're gonna publish or just subscribe, and that's really it. So if we look at the code here, we've got our three pieces. We've got creating our publisher, making sure we get access to the camera and the microphone hardware and being able to uh, patch that into the room that we're about to join. Actually hopping into the session, which is our technical term for room. So once you've hopped into the room and you know things are good to go, you hit the magic publish button and you're off and running. And then ultimately, you just need to listen for what the heck is going on in the room. Are people coming in? Are people going out? And who's publishing? And if you do those three simple things, which is what we're doing in this code here, then you've got everything you need to be able to put people on a website and be able to have a rich and powerful video chat experience. So that's as simple as the base case gets. You've got 30 lines of code, you're off and running. Now, for those of you who were able to see our CEO's keynote yesterday, he threw down a challenge of sorts for me. We've just released our new archiving feature, and he claimed that I could build archiving, which is a feature that requires an infrastructure, a cloud, the ability to store files to a server, stitch them together into one file, and then make them available for download, all within moments after the archive is closed, in 90 seconds or less. So the clock's about to hit five, and I will see if I can pull it off by the time it hits 3.30. Let's see, that's the cheat one. I don't wanna go there. We'll go here, all right, and we're off. Uh, let me just do one little cheat. Okay, 
All right, so case. I always get that backwards. Switch. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, if someone asks me for a specific action, that action is going to be starting an archive, or that action is going to be stopping an archive, then pass in the information you need to start the archive. Pass in the information you need to stop the archive, and then return that it worked. And that's it. In 13 lines of code, and I'll show it to you live in just a second, you can add a feature that would require an entire S3 infrastructure and an entire cloud infrastructure, and lets you actually play archives live in a web browser. So let me first jump to an archive, and then I'll join my teammates in an archived session and we'll see it. So the exact same code that I just wrote for you in, it took me about 75 seconds instead of 90, would produce this archive that I made last night. Quite boring, it was just me, about two in the morning. That's the generic engineer two in the morning face, if I could say so myself. So now, the group of us are in this archive, you'll notice when we join, a little red dot appears, letting us know that the session is being archived. All four of us are there, me twice, because I have two tabs open. It's set to stop after 10 seconds, so it stops after 10 seconds. What we're doing in the back end is we're taking those four streams, we're stitching them all together so that you still just get one file. You can take that file and upload it to YouTube. You can take that file and throw it away into some storage somewhere, never to be seen again. But if someone calls to your customer support center and says, hey, someone promised me a million free minutes, you can always check the archive and see if they actually said that or not. So I think we've given it enough time. We should have one new archive, our OpenTalk archiving demo. And when we play that, there we are. So. Since we have about a minute to go, let's do it one more time. We will, uh, let me, this time we will add a mobile device. It's as simple as having the mobile app. I'm not writing a single line of extra code. The code that I've already written is going to work, assuming that I can connect. Oops. There we go. Oh. It doesn't want to connect. Let me give it one more shot. There we go. I will make you guys the view. I will go. There we are. Oh, am I publishing? Yep, I'm publishing. We are archiving. We're going to have our 10 seconds. There we go. Let's just give it a little bit of time. There it is. And as my time runs out, ah, that's OK. The black box in the corner would have been our iOS demo. But live demos have some faults as well. So um, hopefully you can see there, in about uh, 50 lines of code or less, you have an OpenTalk-powered application that can do archiving. And you can take that to mobile devices. You can have it in the browser. 
And uh, if you have any questions, we're at the booth tonight and tomorrow. So thank you very much.